What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News, and I am continuing this part two of the interview exclusive with uh, Teofimo Lopez Sr. and my man, uh, Radio Rahim. And this is the continuation, so let's move forward. Let's go. It was just disgusting, you know. It was, it was, I could not believe what they just did to us. But well, you looking, know why they just stayed us? Well, looking forward, but looking forward, where does Lopez go? If not at 135. Are we going to go up to 140, um, get a fight date in February, and then fight Josh Taylor in the springtime. We're still going to do what we said we was going to do. This doesn't change anything, you know what I'm saying? I don't believe in judge decisions because they could be compromised the same way they compromised us in the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Um, everything could be bought. You know, that's why I, told, I, I, I teach my boy, you got to take them out. If you don't take them out, they could touch it. They could do something to us. So, um, he's not giving the rematch, as you guys heard. He's not giving... Gambosos the rematch. Well, give you know, I, so he's not even entertaining that idea. He wants to go to 140. And, you know, I guess that's the reason for him not winning, but you you thought he won, which was is totally retarded. Okay. Because you didn't say what happened to him. You just said, well, when you don't knock the fighter out, this is what happens. But what did 135 being there have anything to do with him? See, there's no, he's not even talking reasonably and sensibly about why his son stayed at 135. You know why? Because he's so damn proud to the point he doesn't want to give his son any realistic flaws. And if, you, and if uh, from the first part of this, epi this interview, you heard him say nothing about what Teofimo should have done, could have done, you know, like someone like realistically like, like, um, um, well, not not even like 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 Kenny Porter because Kenny Porter really didn't say he just said what you know what uh, Sean Porter didn't do and what type of shape he wasn't in. Teofimo, we're not even hearing that as of now. Okay, so he's not even trying to go back by that. But then I'm like, okay, well, why wouldn't you want to rematch something that you? I, I guess if you feel you already won, but my guess would be you don't want to get in a, another firefight with that guy on for on foreign land. Okay of Cambosos and lose again, you know, because see what they're doing, they know that there's money fights that they're trying to get done, it's like um, Josh Taylor. And speaking of Josh Taylor people, why would Josh Taylor want to fight Teofimo Lopez now after he took him taking a loss? You know, they're talking as though they still have those damn belts, but even though he would have to leave them at 135 like he planned to do, so he just got his ass whooped before he could do so because they got took from him. Okay, but him taking those fights at 140 and then thinking he's going to get a Josh Taylor fight. What if Josh Taylor decides, well, you got beat. So, I mean, really, what good are you? You know, because you lost the WBO. They don't have to do anything. Now, if Josh Taylor wants to give him that opportunity for all his belts, that's one thing. But he doesn't have to do anything with Teofimo because Teofimo lost. He lost those belts. So that's a big difference between what you think you deserve or what you think you earned versus what you lost and what you think you're entitled to. Because it's seeming to me like his dad is saying that uh, we're going to go do this because we're entitled to do this. And they're not. See, if he would have took all those belts now in or in, in realistically, if Teofimo would have beat Devin Haney, then he would have had every belt. Then he would have been undisputed at his weight class at 135, where he campaigned. Okay, He didn't pull a Tank Davis and went to 140 and fought on a trial run against a smaller guy or a smaller champion, rather. He never been there yet. He just talked about going to 140. Yes, he's been talking about that for years. Uh, Lopez Sr. is right about that, but what does he think... He deserves at 140. What fights could he get at 140? You know? And the irony of this is, the irony of this whole thing is, he may get these damn fights now. Because people look at Tio now, they're like, dude, he could get his ass beat. He could get his ass whooped. He's, we've seen it. And seeing is believing. And people see, hey, man, you know what? He's not as good as we thought he was. 
So if that's the case, you know what? I want to be that second person to really shut him down and end his career. You remember T.O. talking about my end his career and this, that, and the other? Well, if you, you didn't you didn't revenge your loss, um, and then you went, you you ran it basically you ran to another weight class after you lost. Then you get beat up there by someone like Progray or Taylor or Ramirez or somebody like that. Well, where do you go from there? So I think, you know, I think they really need to think about things before they talk it. Let's continue. You know, I'm happy. He's happy. We all happy. You know why? Because he's the people's champ. Yeah. Uh, no matter how a loss comes, once it's read out and it's official, your son comes back to the corner. What's the first thing you say to him? It doesn't matter what I'm going to say to him. I think he did a great job tonight. Um, every round, I was happy. I was motivating him, and 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 I would go inside. I would say, "Yo, you got that one. You got that one. You got that one." It was like to me, he won unanimous. But you can put it at ten, two, nine, three. You know, because of the knockdown, and 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 he just he just slipped. It was like a it was like a flash knockdown. You know what I'm saying? But um. Okay, let me stop right there. Again, just because you go in and you're praising your son and you're telling your son, hey, you got that one, you got that one, doesn't mean that he actually got that one. Okay? Because I think at this point, uh, Teofimo Sr. is going to look at what he wants to look at. He's going to see what he wants to see. He might have seen his son beat Gambosos. He might have saw that just like his son did. But the apple don't fall too far from the tree, people. You have to remember that, okay? With this, this is what you call a uh, delusion of grandeur. You feel that you did more based on what you thought you seen, based on what you're not looking at the other fighter do, okay? And that's one of the reasons why um, I don't feel that he should, if, if he deceived his fighter like that, which in this case, his son also, uh, I don't think that he really needs to be in there because I think if somebody would have been in there that actually, honestly, unbiasedly looked at that fight and seen it for what it was, then I think and I feel that he T.O. would have stepped it up more. And now I see why T.O. thought this shit that he said and said the things that he said because his daddy was telling him the whole time, just like Joshua didn't really know. You look at Anthony Joshua again. He didn't really know where he was. Why do you think when they said in the new and Joshua, he was like that because he didn't expect to lose that fight based on what his corner was telling him. This is the same situation, same damn platform. Uh, 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 Lopez Sr. was telling his son, hey, you got this one, you know, and then you want to blame the network. No, your son got his ass beat. He got dropped the first round. And he got outboxed all through the middle rounds. And he lost two of the championship rounds. So that is that. And for whoever's telling him otherwise, they're lying to him. They're bullshitting him. And he's bullshitting himself. And he bullshitted his son. So you talk about bullshit losses, people. This is this. The thought of him uh, thinking it's a bullshit loss is bullshit. OK, but anyway, that's just me wrapping it up of uh, Lopez Sr. with his uh, interview. This is part two concluding. You guys tell me what you think about these two interviews. Of course, please subscribe. I will have the first interview in part one. If you haven't seen that, tell me what you think. And you guys been counterpunch. Peace.